Hello friends, in this video on Eurodynamic Evaluation, we shall learn some basics about the abnormalities that we pick in the filling phase, that is the systometry. We record here firstly the sensation, the first sensation and the maximum sensation. We record any unstable contraction happening in the detrusor muscle. We record the compliance of the detrusor muscle. We record the capacity of urinary bladder, the maximum systometric capacity. We record end filling pressures. And we also record the appropriateness of control over the micturition. We record these six features. Let me talk for a while on these two, the unstable contraction and the compliance. If you see a urodynamic uh, machine screen, these are the lines that be visible to you, five lines. If you, I begin from the top, P retrusor, P vesicle, P abdomen, bladder filling and urophometry. Now this arrangement can vary on different machines, but conceptually it remains like this. And when you are filling the urinary bladder, you get these kind of movement in these lines. They move on. You notice some rise taking place. And the rise taking place. And that is how the filling phase is reaching to the completion. Now let me explain to you these three elevations that you notice in these pressure lines. In the first elevation, you would notice that there is a rise in the P abdomen and there is a rise in the P vesicle, but P detrusor does not show any change. This is checking the lines by the cuff caused by the patient. When patient coughs, the intra-abdominal pressure rises and so does the P vesicle. But since detrusor muscle is not contracting, it will remain quiet. So this is first elevation. In the second elevation, you see there is a sudden rise in the detrusor and P vesicle both, but no rise in P abdominal. This is the unstable contraction in the urinary bladder. But then you see nothing on the urophometry graph. So this is an unstable contraction without leak. In the third one, you will see sudden elevation in the P detrusor as well as in P vesicle nothing in the abdomen, but on the urophometry tracing, you notice some leakage of urine. So this is an unstable contraction with leak. The point I'm trying to make is that you can record unstable contractions without leakage or with leakage. And when you record unstable contractions, there should be no activity in the P abdominal line. In the another example, you see the filling phase going on and that is how the pressure lines show the change. Here, this is the unstable contraction without leakage, right? Unstable contraction because the P detrusor line moved up, P vesicle line moved up, nothing happened on the P abdominal. But in the second thing is, P abdominal moved, P vesicle moved, but nothing happened to the detrusor line. So this is cuff induced rise in the bladder pressure. This is not unstable contraction. The third example, again, you see the bladder filling going up. And as the bladder filling going up, you notice the pressure line is rising a little bit slowly, slowly, slowly. The P vesicle is rising, the P detrusor is rising and going higher and higher till the end of the filling. When you get this kind of a graph, this is indicative of a poor compliance of the urinary bladder. You can of course calculate it by a mathematical formula, which we'll tell you later. So friends, the major abnormalities in the systometry is rise in the pressure during filling. If the rise is intermittent type, it is called unstable bladder. Or if the rise is a sustained and consistent rise, this is called a poor compliance. In the detrusor involuntary contractions, which I've been referring as unstable contraction of urinary bladder, which is a physic contraction in the detrusor muscle and pressure generated by that contraction should be more than 15 centimeter of water. Some people feel that any rise in bladder pressure accompanied with a sense of urge 
in the mind of the patient should be called as unstable contraction but that's a debatable situation we use two words for this unstable contraction one is detrusor instability a second is detrusor hyperreflexia detrusor hyperreflexia word is used when we have a visible clinically manifest neurological abnormality act to account for the unstable contraction in the urinary bladder so hyperreflexia is a neurological instability of the urinary bladder while detrusor instability is a more general term the compliance as i said you can suspect poor compliance by just observing the consistent elevation in the pressure line but then you can also calculate this by change in the bladder volume divided by change in the pressure the normal compliance should be uh, you know 40 ml per centimeter of water let me talk about two more features of the cystometry that is end filling pressure and control over the micturition one test is called leak point pressure also known as detrusor leak point pressure when you fill up the bladder gradually gradually at at a certain amount of pressure you notice leak leakage and this is called dlpp and if it is more than 40 cm of water you can have the possibility of damage to the upper urinary tract there is another leak point pressure which is called valsalva leak point pressure the difference is when you have filled the bladder to about 200 ml and then you ask the patient to either cough or do a valsalva maneuver and then record at what level of pressure leakage is taking place if the leakage is taking place at a pressure less than 60 cm it is regarded to be due to intrinsic eccentric deficiency of the urethra or if it is happening at a higher pressure that is more than 90 cm of water it is regarded to be due to a urethral hypermobility in patients of stress urinary incontinence so i hope you understood this basic about the abnormalities of filling phase i am not intending to give you more details here you can find it out yourself if you are interested in more details thank you very much if you have questions about it you can write to me on my email